Today you're going to be watching Beast Mode POV as he plays alongside his squad G2 against the Falcons in the London Major Grand Final. NA versus Mina, a matchup that we actually got multiple times in the Major, something that was probably one of the number one questions I got asked on stream. If G2 and Falcons played, what would the end result be? And the interesting part was we saw it go both ways. So I think there was never really a wrong answer, which we had to have known, and a lot of people felt like coming into this grand final that the Falcons were the better team, but maybe had a little bit less grand final experience, something that G2 definitely has with the way their whole season has gone. And in fact, looking back, the weakness of North America as a region maybe made us not realize just how good G2 was from the very beginning of the season. Now, the last time that North America was able to win, it was with Nolly and Jack, who had just recently moved from EU, which almost felt like a little bit of the credit was given to EU, even though if Nolly and Jack were to win now, I think it should be rightfully accredited to North America where they have spent, you know, the last two years improving. And that is about how quick the game goes. But the last win that did not need an EU teammate to help out was actually when G2 won at the Winter Major of the original open season when Atomic won alongside JNAPS and Chicago and I mentioned that this is actually history for North America not just because we were able to get a win without EU players but also for Americans because we were able to get a win without a Canadian. Uh, I think there's always been at least one Canadian involved whether that's JNAPS, Squishy, Lachino, the RLCS land win with all Americans happened and it happened here at the London Major and the London Major always seems to deliver. Now, I want to talk a little bit about G2 and their strength because in retrospect, it seems like they've always been this top team because North America was coming into this season as a whole, um, clearly behind EU. You know, people were joking that some other regions maybe were even stronger than NA, saying Sam, or they weren't joking about it. They were joking that maybe NA was a minor region, but they were serious about the fact that maybe Sam or Mina might have stronger teams down to the bottom than NA. But I think what NA did is actually something that Mina did, which is the reason why they were finally able to win an event and why both of those regions have a team here in the Grand Finals, which is they collected their best players and they brought them all into one team, which is what you need to do if you're everyone but France. <laughs> if you're everyone but France, you could just pick from only the French-speaking players and you'll be fine. You'll probably create a championship-winning team. But the other regions need to consolidate everybody at the top. And it seems that that's what G2 has done. We thought at the beginning of the season, you know, G2 and Gen G with them adding first killer, which one of those two teams was going to be the dominant one that took over. And like I said, looking back, there were moments when Gen G shone through, but Truly, it's G2 the whole way. They have made it into every single Grand Final. They have extreme Grand Final experience as Atomic is able to slot the first goal. A somewhat uninteresting goal here in Game 1 as Beast Mode tries to wall dash and get a bump on Rawas. We're watching from Beast Mode POV because he did end up winning the MVP for the entire event. And I actually think that lots of people will have Beast Mode as number one in the world. At this point, you have to have G2 as the number one team in the world and Beast Mode could very easily be the number one player in the world. So we'll watch his decision making as he plays here in this grand final. Though, if you were any aware of how the, the series went, it actually doesn't go so well for them here in game number one, despite the fact that the rest of the series goes perfectly as Beast Mode jumps to clear it away. Nothing like a little team bump from some North Americans to put the fear in in a grand final as Daniel, somebody who we've been watching for a long time and actually I'm happy to see that he has joined a team that has been able to reach the level of excellence that is expected of him for so long. But we talk a lot about G2 and Daniel, this shot was insane. I wanted to focus a little bit on Rawas as Killiers leans back on the reset. What Rawas does on this play is absurd. And I actually haven't seen too many people talking about it just because so many things might have overshadowed this play, but what Rawas does as Kaliers leans back for the fake reset, Rawas is looking to take Daniel out of the way, which he does with this bump, but he also redirects the ball, which is maybe not clear to make Beast Mode miss. And we were watching from Beast Mode POV the first time around, but you can see he is prepping for the save. He sees Rawas going for the bump, and as long as the ball stays on its regular trajectory, Beast Mode still gets the save. But Rawas doubles up both a bump and a redirect. And, you know, I talk about this a lot. Did he do both on purpose? You could argue he's just going for the demo. But in general, I like to give players like Rawas the benefit of the doubt. He was maybe intentionally 
hoping to redirect it as well as take Daniel out of the play, but an insane setup from Rewas to tie the game here in game number one. And as I mentioned before, it sounds like the sentiment was that the Falcons were playing the best coming into the grand final. And I say it sounds like because I was actually on a trip over the major. I didn't get to watch every single game, but I went back and watched the replays here of this grand final and saw a lot of interesting things to check out as Beast Mode is actually going to be floating away from this ball, deciding that a 50 there is not worth it. But now, double attempt covered by Rawas with 42 seconds left to go in this game. Beast Mode will be deleted, and I think Beast Mode just watching through the replays of this grand final, it was actually ended up being a pretty favorable win for G2. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say Beast Mode was far and away the best player in this in this specific series, but he was definitely the best player over the course of the event. And Rawas is going to make a nice play here to win this game number one that I wanted to point out and I wanted to actually go show another case of him doing this, which is an air dribble 50, but specifically winning 50s to teammates is something that Rawas seems to do really, really well. At the end of this 50, he gets the ball bouncing right out to TRK, who's able to then slot a shot in for the game winning goal. There is no more goals scored in this game, but Rawas Hitting 50s to win games is uh, something that happened in a huge match that we'll take a quick look at right now. A detour into overtime in the semifinals. We are watching Rawas POV as this has gone all the way to game seven. Next goal to be scored will advance to the grand final. It'll be the second time that Mina has made it to a grand final in London. And of course, we know he does make it, that he being Rawas and the rest of his team. Although it is the first time Rawas has made it to a grand final. Him and his twin brother playing alongside TRK this time around. Kind of like G2. You know, instead of Atomic alongside JNAPS in Chicago, I only just realized, you know, it's TRK back at it again, holding it down for Mina, but this time with a newer, younger duo to help him get there. As Juicy takes an air dribble at TRK 50s, and Rawas playing off this back wall, keeps the air dribble going and perfectly 50s out to TRK who sends a long shot in. Now, this is exactly how they scored that goal in game one of the grand finals, but I just wanted to cover this 50 by Rawas because it's such an impressive play as he set up, pointed back towards the net, has a really awkward way to get to the ball, ends up bouncing it off the ground and sticking with it with Seiko in order to force it directly out to a teammate to get an immediate goal. Rawas never seems to give up on the play, and we've always known about those mean of 50s. In fact, to even force it to overtime, TRK hit a, uh, a nice 50, you could argue himself. We'll quickly go back to um, TRK's goal so that you guys can see that if you haven't already, which is TRK with 20 seconds left to go. Letting Juicy tap it off the wall and then getting up over the top of Seiko to dunk it in. Nice 50s from Mina. That one got them to overtime with 15 seconds left to go. Is definitely one worth pointing out, but I wanted to show Rawas winning 50s to his teammates in order to score goals because he did it in a big crucial moment of the London Major that we weren't going to be able to see in the Grand Final. But now, on to more games from the Grand Final. Back to MVP POV in Game 3 of the Grand Finals as we are going to watch Beast Mode find the first bucket of this game. But we're going to look at a few different goals that were scored. Great placement here from Beast Mode. And specifically, I think this shows what happens to the Falcons a lot in this series, which is they're so confident and, and they're so aggressive uh, when it comes to their offense and expecting, you know, everything to work out. We talked about their 50s before. Kaliers, who's last back, clearly seems to think that TRK and Rabas are going to be able to win this, despite the fact they're both diving. He still cheats up and Daniel gets such a big win that Killiers cannot cover it. And you'll see a lot of different times in these goals, that even some of the games that we aren't really covering, that it is a bit of an all-in type play from the Falcons that doesn't end up working out, that results in late recoveries and tough times and making saves. But we are going to go to this next goal because it is a ridiculous goal if you didn't catch it live. It is TRK and Killiers combining for a team pinch that launches the ball to the back wall, a little wave dash setup, and very clearly they were going for the team pinch. The follow-up goal is a bit of a soft touch, which actually ends up being exactly what they needed. It's just not a very mechanically impressive goal. But specifically, the way they set up this team pinch to get a ton of power, we'll watch it from TRK's perspective as he has vision of the field, gets this low 50, sees Killiers coming for the wave dash, and just pounds it right into his car. 
Calculators up quickly despite no boost to tap it down and give the first goal for the Falcons in this game and one of the rare goals they actually scored in the series because G2 again did a great job in some of the games that we aren't going to cover just the more interesting games were ones where both of them ended up getting goals but we're going to go to the final goal that was scored here that was maybe one of the most ridiculous shots of the tournament eight seconds left to go we are back on mvp puv it is beast mode as trk is going to pop this ball to the back wall and a perfect little first touch up to the ceiling from beast mode as he carries it the length of the field, drops down and bumps Killiers, and the shot is absolutely slotted by Daniel. I maybe should have just shown you the defensive perspective first because truly it's an insanely impressive shot as Daniel scoops underneath Beast Mode and redirects this back behind Rawas. Rawas is the best guy you could beat in defense. When you beat him on the goal line, you know you made a great shot. But you can watch it again from Rawas POV. It is just such a hard play to read. There's no way to know where this ball is going to head and Daniel specifically flying so deep underneath the ball to redirect it out away from Rawas. Rawas has the entire right side of the net from Daniel's POV covered and Daniel does not accept that. He doesn't just shoot the shot that would be easy to hit towards that side. He intentionally gets the insane redirect to win game number three and put his team up to one, which is a huge victory. Something that you never know what would happen if they weren't able to score this one. It went to overtime. Maybe things go different ways, but insane placement from the guy who's been on the channel for a really long time. And the last game we'll cover is the final one, which is game number five. Game five of the grand finals. And we're going to start here on Daniel POV, the guy that has held it down on the back line for G2 since he has joined their team and a guy who's held it down on the back line since he has played with any of his teams and it really enables, I would argue, Beast Mode to really go to work. But he's not just an expert there in defense. He also knows how to set up his teammates with this insane pass just 20 seconds in. Perfect placement into the top right as Killiers can't get to this ball and just right down to Atomic in a way that the defenses can never expect. If you go watch TRK, who's probably the primary defender here on this play, you see him tap it into the corner. He knows Daniel might be taking a shot. You see him prepping to maybe go across the net if Daniel does, and he recognizes, wait, he's going high. I need to go up and save that. Only Daniel found the absolute perfect bounce to send it right back out to the midfield. So TRK says, wait a second. I need to get back down and go to where I previously was, and he's unable to make the save. Now, even if he didn't do that, he was probably going to be low speed on the wall there. He can't, you know, keep his speed momentum uh, with nowhere to drive inside the net. But still, a very impressive setup from Daniel to open up the scoring here in game number five. But it's going to be Beast Mode who does the hard work next. So we will hop on to his POV as they get their second goal. We'll jump forward here to Daniel clearing the ball away into the corner. You can see all of the Falcons on the field in front of Beast Mode, and Beast Mode taps this ball down to nobody and then bumps for Wass. And I think a lot of what happened here is reflective of what happened in the series, which is just the Falcons being so trusting and so aggressive in their offense. But TRK taps this one up. Beast Mode makes a very clever touch here. I think lots of people will just... Go for speed, go for power, and try and boom this ball into where Killiers is completely ready for it. You see Killiers starting to cheat up on the sidewall for a strong touch from Beast Mode, but instead, Beast Mode drops the ball softly and almost kills it at the midfield instead of handing the ball away, which makes Killiers now have an awkward play off the sidewall. He ends up actually not even being able to make a play at all. Gives up on the ball and says, screw it, I'm going to go try and get a demo since Beast Mode did a good job of keeping me out of making a play. But after Beast Mode landed, Rawas thinks, well, I don't want to do the same thing. I don't want to tap this ball powerfully into the corner and give it over to Atomic and Daniel. So I'm going to try and control it. But he forgot that Beast Mode was still in the play. And after Kalir's demo does not land, Daniel shoots on a wide open net. And now why is the net wide open as well? It's because the Falcons have just been fully committing. Look at this play from TRK and just how aggressive it is. After he takes his touch in the corner, Kalir's lobs it up. He gets a first touch reset, maybe trying to go for some, sonic, some sort of carry, but when he doesn't get it, he just stays locked in and goes all the way to the attacking boost. And you can almost see him maybe trying to decide about what he's going to do. You see him waver there like, should I be going back and not stealing this boost? Ah, no, screw it. I am going to steal it. And unfortunately, this was one of the rare times that it was not the right idea to trust for Wasp. But I bet that often... You feel like you can. You could just leave Rawas back there. This time, it doesn't work out. The MVP of the tournament gets the demo, and Daniel shoots on an open net. 
And there's one more goal that secured the major. We're on beast mode POV again, so I'm not sure what I was talking about when I said beast mode maybe wasn't necessarily the best player in this series, just the whole tournament. Well, I think maybe he's the best player in the tournament and this series, but he is going to slam down a dunk, a classic dunk, with just about nobody in his way as Rawas carries this up. Daniel intercepts it, and nobody is back at all. And why is that? Well, I think it's because the Falcons have continued their incredibly aggressive strategies, which, you know, with two or with a minute and 12 left to go with down two now it's you know tougher to blame them but i still think this is reflective of what i saw in the entirety of the grand final watching back the reviews this is Kilir's pov as he follows ruas up the side wall he is single jumping into wave dashing which is like the quintessential hard commit in terms of following and leaves this completely wide open when Ramos is not able to win his 50, but if you actually go look at TRK, TRK is being ultra aggressive as well because he is on zero boost, grabbing the midfield, turning upfield while Ramos is on, you know, the end of his tank on an air dribble. He might win this, but even if he does, it's not going to be a super humongous win. And yet TRK has decided you got to throw everything at the wall. This, I think, is behavior of somebody who's down two with a minute 12 left to go. I can't imagine, you know, why he would be doing this because he just has so much faith in Ramos, which, hey, is to be fair, but Ramos ends up losing the dribble completely over to Daniel as he tried to pop it over the top of him with that last roll. Didn't work out. Credit to Daniel for the interception. Beast mode for the finish. And that was the final goal that was scored at the major. And beast mode proved himself as number one in the world. So North America, it is time to breathe a sigh of relief. We are indeed back. North American regional wins matter once again hopefully they'll still matter when the season starts up again in you know what might be a full year basically or at least half a year uh if they start up and do the same format as they did this last time and also maybe north america has a chance at worlds but again that's about as far away as the start of this season was <laughs> worlds is all the way in september i was saying before this major was even played that it was going to matter more than the Worlds because it was like actually around the time that the rest of the season was. And so it feels like it's representative of when everybody was putting in their best work and, and at their best form. The London Major is the best time to test that. And now it's going to be many months after people have really been playing their best. I mean, I assume these top teams are going to still be screaming themselves, but everybody else is going to be switching around. I don't know. To me, it's so far away. It doesn't even really feel like this season's World Championship. But that's just me coping, and as soon as G2 wins it, I'll make sure to take that all back and say that it always mattered, and it was just as important because North America is indeed back, courtesy of Beast Mode and G2.